Welcome my geometers to section 7.4, which is special right triangles. Today we have one objective. We're going to calculate missing side measures in 45, 45, 90 triangles and also in 30, 60, 90 triangles. Now if you look down at the notes, we're going to start with 45, 45, 90 triangles. So when I say 45, 45, 90, it means that the triangle has two 45 degree angles and one 90 degree angle. Now to classify this triangle, Remember that we classify triangles in two ways, once by the sides and then also by the angles. So we notice we have two 45 degree uh, angles. Two angles are the same, so this is going to be an isosceles triangle. So that's by sides, and then we have a 90 degree angle, which makes this a right triangle. So it's an isosceles right triangle. So drawing a picture, We have one 90 degree angle, we have a 45 degree angle, and a 45 degree angle. Because we have two angles that are the same, or that are congruent, we're also going to have two sides that are congruent. The legs are congruent in this case. So this is the picture. Now, ratio of the sides. I'm going to start with my angles. So my angles are 45, 45, and 90. Okay, now the sides across from the 45 degrees, those have to be congruent. So if one is L, I'm going to call the other one also L. So the two sides across from the 45 degrees are L and L. So like my two legs are L. The hypotenuse is L root 2. L root 2. I know that's confusing, but I thought we should just jump into example and try. So looking at example number one, it says calculate the length of the missing sides in the figure below. So first I notice that I have this 90 degree angle and I have a 45 degree angle. If I take 180 and I subtract 90 and I subtract 45, I'm going to find that this other angle is also 45 degrees. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by writing 45, 45, 90 and then I'm also going to write this other ratio, this L, L, L root 2. Now we notice we only have one side. We have this 8. The 8 is across from the 45 degrees, so that means under the 45 degrees I'm going to write an 8. This is in the ratio. This right here tells me that L equals 8. Okay, so L is still 8. Now here I need to write L root 2. Well, L is 8, and then I bring down the root 2. So these are the three sides of my triangle. The two eights are across from the 45 degrees, so across from the 45 is an 8 and an 8. The 8 root 2 is across from the 90, so across from the 90 is going to be 8 root 2. So those are my sides, 8, 8, 8 root 2, which should make sense. In a 45, 45, 90 tri triangle, you're always going to have two sides that are congruent, and then the hypotenuse has to be the biggest side, and 8 root 2 is certainly bigger than 8. Let's try another one. Okay, so first I have to decide, is this the 45, 45, 90 triangle? Well, I do have a right angle, so that's a good start. And I know that two sides are congruent. If the sides are going to be congruent, the angles across from them are congruent. So yes, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So let's start by writing our ratio. I have 45, 45, 90, which is L, L, L root 2. Now I need to find the x's, but what I do know is I do know this side that's 5 root 2. It's across from the right angle. So under the 90, I'm going to write 5 root 2. So what I know right now is that L root 2 is equal to 5 root 2. I always want to know what L is though, because L is the, the simplest variable in the entire um, ratio. So if I divide both sides by root 2, my root 2's cancel, I get L equals 5. So L is 5, that means my other L is 5. So this tells us across from the 45 degrees is a 5. So across from the 45 degrees is a 5. Across from the other 45 degrees is a 5. So X equals 5 in this case. So I know this is confusing, but stick with me. 
believe we have two more examples before moving on. I would like you to try example number three on your own. So try this example. Pause the video, do the example completely on your own, and then come back and we will go over it. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now, we know this is 45, 45, 90 because I have my right angle and I have two legs that are congruent, which means the angles are going to be congruent. So I'm going to start with 45, 45, 90, and then I have L, L, L root 2. Now, I know the side across from the 90 is 2 root 2, so across from the 90 is 2 root 2. This tells me L root 2 is equal to 2 root 2. If I both divide both sides by root 2, I get L equals 2. So under L is 2, and under the other L is a 2. So across from both of the 45 degree angles is a 2. So across from the 45 degrees is a 2. Across from the 45 degrees is a 2. So in this case, both of my legs are 2. Which again, does this make sense? Well, I have two sides that are congruent. They're both 2. And then the hypotenuse is the longest side. 2 root 2 is greater than my two sides of 2, which makes sense. So it's always a good idea to do that mental check. Do I have answers that make sense? You should always have two that are congruent. The hypotenuse should always be the largest. That's true of any right triangle. Okay. You have one more to do on your own. This last one, number four. Pause the video and try this one on your own. I would like you to set up a ratio. You cannot use Pythagorean theorem. So set up a ratio like we did in the first three, and then solve for this last side. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. My sides are L, L, L root 2. So here's the tricky part. I have these two sides that are 3 root 2. And it's very tempting to put the 3 root 2 here. Because I have root 2 and root 2 again. That's tempting. But I need to think, is my 3 root 2 across from the 90? No, it's not. So this is the wrong spot. Looking, my 3 root 2 is across from the 45s. So that means 3 root 2 goes under the 45, and it goes under the other 45. That tells me L is equal to 3 root 2. This spot here is L root 2. So I take L, which is 3 root 2, and then I still have to multiply it by this other root 2. So L is 3 root 2, but then I still have to multiply by another root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is just 4, so this is really 3 root 4, but the square root of 4 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, so this is a 6. That means across from the 90, the side should be a 6. Okay, I know that's tricky. I'm guessing if you got the problem wrong, you thought that that side might be a 3. That would be my guess. But that does not make sense. The hypotenuse should be the longest side. 3 is not greater than 3 root 2. So if you got an answer of 3, that means your hypotenuse was smaller than the two legs, which doesn't make sense. So you should have gone back and found your mistake. I know that one's tricky, and you're going to see a lot of those. So that was 45, 45, 90 triangles. Let's move on to 30, 60, 90 on the next page. Okay, so 30, 60, 90 triangle. In terms of classifying by sides, none of my angles are the same, so none of the sides are going to be the same. So this is a scalene triangle. Still have a 90 degree angle, so it's still right. So it's a scalene right triangle. Scalene, all the sides are different, and then it's also right. So in terms of a picture, for right angle, I have 30 degrees, I have 60 degrees. All the sides are different. This ratio is a little trickier because I don't have any sides that are congruent. So still my angles are 30, 60, 90. Across from the side that's 30, we call that L. 
Across from the 60 is L root 3. Across from the 90 is 2L. So let's put those on our picture. Across from the 30 is L. So across from the 30 is L. Across from the 60 is L root 3. And across from the 90 is 2L. Okay, so again, this is a little more complicated than the 45, 45, 90. But it's a very, very similar process. So let's just jump into example 5. So we know right away that this is a 30, 60, 90 because we're told 30, 60, 90. So the first thing that we're going to do is write our ratio. So we have 30, 60, 90, L, L root 3, 2 L. Okay, so we know the side across from the 30 in this case is 6. So under the 30, I'm going to write a 6. This tells us that L is equal to 6. So I have two more to fill in. L root 3 then is going to be 6 root 3. And 2 multiplied by L, 2 multiplied by 6, is going to be 12. So now I just need to determine which one is X and which one is Y. X is across from the 90, so across from the 90 is 12. So X is equal to 12. Y is across from the 60. Across from the 60 is 6 root 3, as I can tell by my ratio. Okay, you try the next one. So try this example right here. Take a sec, pause the video, uh, do the entire problem, find x equals y equals, and then come back. Okay, so let's see how we did. So you should have had 30, 60, 90. L, L root 3, 2L. We know the side across from the 90 is 4. So under the 90, you should have written just plain old 4. I'm going to guess some of us wrote 8, but across from the 90 is just 4. 4 is what it is. So we know that 2L is equal to 4, which means L is equal to 2. So under the L then, I'm going to write a 2. And L root 3 then is going to be 2 root 3. In this case, x is across from the 60, so x is the 2 root 3. y is across from the 30, so y is going to be the 2. Okay, so I'm going to guess if you messed up anything, you might have gotten x to be 4 root 3 and y to be 4, maybe, because you wrote 8 under the 2L. That's okay, that's a common mistake. We just need to pay attention. On our triangle is 4. So that means under the 90, just go plain old 4. Okay. I would like you to try this last one. Pause the video. See what you can do. Um, I will let you know that your answers are not going to end up as nice as the answers in the problems before this. You're going to end up with a radical in the denominator. Good luck. Let's see how we did. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have L, L root 3, and 2L. We know the side across from the 60 is 9. So under the 60 just goes plain old 9. Just 9. So this is what we have right now. L root 3 is equal to 9. I want to know L though. You always want to go back to what's L. So I have to divide by root 3. This gives me L is equal to 9 divided by root 3. And just leave it like that. So L is 9 divided by root 3. So then I need to take 2 and multiply it by 9 over root 3. Remember that 2 is just 2 over 1. So 2 multiplied by 9 is 18. And then 1 multiplied by root 3 is root 3. So in this case, X across from the 30 is 9 over root 3 y across from the 90 is 18 divided by root 3. And just keep your answers like that. So I know that doesn't look very nice, but that's the correct answer. So if you made a mistake on that one, it's okay, it happens.
Well, you have one more to do on your own. So this video covered 45, 45, 90 triangles. Those were the L, L, L root 2. And then 30, 60, 90 triangles, which were the L, L root 3, and 2L. So here's the example for you to do. It says calculate the height of an equilateral triangle with a side length of 6. So I'm going to help you by setting the problem up. Equilateral means all the sides are congruent. So I have a triangle where all my sides are congruent, and they're all 6. So I have 6, 6, 6. Equilateral, member is also equiangular. So it also means that all the angles are congruent. In this case, they're all 60. So 60, 60, 60. You are asked to calculate the height. So you need to find this height right here. Okay, so that splits my upper 60 into 30 and 30. You should be able to go from here. Find the height. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm expecting that you have this figure drawn and that you have a logical answer for the height. Good luck.